All right, folks, I am torn on which class I should play for Dragon's Dogma 2. So I've done a little bit of Dragon's Dogma 1. Um, I've enjoyed some things, not enjoyed some other things uh, as I've been playing through that. And one of the things that strikes me is the difference between what I'm seeing in the uh, vocation videos that they've been showing off here for Dragon's Dogma 2 versus what I've seen in the first game. So I kind of want to go through things a little bit with people and talk about what I've, you know, the differences I'm seeing here because one of the reasons I decided to go with the mage in the first game and the sorcerer, I normally don't play sorcerers. I normally play bow characters. But one of the things I saw when I first started the game and got going in Dragon's Dogma 1 was that you couldn't use a bow right away. It was like you were going to do a rogue build. It was daggers until, and you got one bow ability until you were higher up and you were able to spec into like archer. And that made me a little fearful of it being just um, like a normal thief character um, with just a ranged attack. And, and that kind of made me go, eh, I'm not a big fan of that. I want to be an archer out of the get-go. I don't want to have to be forced to do a play style that I don't want until I get the one that I do. Um, so I decided that because I didn't want to go through stab, stab, stabity, stab, and there was a, I felt like there was a little bit of button mashing going on from the action perspective of the melee characters, I ended up going with a mage slash sorcerer. And ultimately, I have enjoyed that in Dragon's Dogma 1, but there's one major thing that has turned me off to the gameplay in the combat specifically. It's not the... Um, there's, there's a lot of complexities in the first game, and I really enjoyed what I've seen so far, but the combat is the one thing I don't, I don't really care for. Some of it is the jankiness related to the pawns. And I've heard that that's going away with this game because they have much better AI, much better pathing, much better everything. So the jank should be gone. Um, but there's also the aspect and when, but by jank, I mean the AI pathing and you're like, your NPC is getting like clogged up in a corridor when you're trying to go somewhere or escape a good example if you haven't watched me stream the first game we were on our way to the dragon or the griffin not the dragon we we're on our way to the griffin and um you have to go through these uh, this area where there's like wind just blowing at your characters and you eventually get to this break point where you have a, a, a some breathing room and then there's a corridor you have to go down and take a right and it's just this canyon lined with bandits I mean, bandits and bandits and bandits, like dozens of bandits, right? And there's ranged characters and they're like two-shotting my characters, three-shotting my characters. And what I would love to do in any other game that I've ever played is I would run in, pull, back, bring one or two of them with me, and then the rest of the party would stand there at the edge of the canyon and rain down hellfire and take them down two or three at a time, go back in, pull some more, go back in, pull some more until we've done it all. But because the pathing is so horrific with the pawns, I can't, doesn't matter what controls we use, doesn't matter what commands we do, I threw my head against that brick wall like seven or eight times on a live stream before I just like, you know what, I'm, I've had enough of this. And I've seen and heard that the, uh, that the jank of the pathing and everything else is gone with the second one because there have been you know, much needed improvements in the 12 years since the first game came out. And if you want to go back to the development time, it's probably been 15 plus years since that first game was actually developed. Um, the other thing that... Um, I looked at the uh, in the first game is the target locking seems to take quite a, quite a long time. It seems to be you know very slow to lock on, whereas in the second one the target locking seems to be much snappier and much quicker. I actually want to take a look at some of these videos real quick and show you what I'm talking about because they've been doing these um um these vocation little snippets so i want to look at this real quick so this is the mage and if you've been watching my playthrough and watching my streams you'll know what i'm talking about Uh oh hang on i got a cat in here that's not supposed to be in here what are you doing in here go out dora sorry guys wasn't expecting that um kitty cat wasn't supposed to be in here um let's watch the mage one because this is the one i've been playing so this will be the one that's most relevant to to my gameplay experience recently they've got a lock they do their thing That's your normal firebolt or your normal blast. That's a heal. Maybe. So that looks about like the first one. Now that's that's way snappier. Did you see that? See how snappy, like as 
soon as she's pulling up her spells, it is immediately locking onto the target. And that was something that did not, it does not happen that way in the first game. The first game, when you start to cast a spell, it takes a couple of seconds, sometimes maybe more, for it to lock on to the target. And once it's locked onto the target, you can then switch between the lock on points. But the combat in this, in Dragon's Dogma 2, the combat looks to be much, much snappier. Um. Let's go look at the, um, I want to look at the ranger. They did the archer one the other day. And this is, I'm, I'm leaning back towards playing an archer again in this game. Although I've really loved the, uh, I forget the name of the, the all-in-one vocation they shared um, a while back. Look, look at, did you see that slide? Hang on. That's my slow-ass computer taking forever to load a tab. All right, watch the slide at the beginning of this. Oh, and the, that was cool. Jumping off the back of another one and somersaulting backwards. That That's cool. So we've got... That's a slow pull. It seems like he's auto-targeting, too. There's no target lock here. That's a really long cast. I wonder why there's no target locking. You know what I mean? Like the circle. Ah, <laughs> perfect timing. All right, so I mean, I, I, I like what both of those look like. Um, what was the one they shared? I think it was the action trailer. This is the one I really want to take another look at because this one had some pretty snappy combat too. And this is what makes me wonder what I'm really going to want to play. Because I tell you what, they've talked about the all-in-one the all-in-one class that's coming. I cannot remember what it's called. But it's the one that allows you to blend all these vocations together so you can switch your styles in the middle of combat. At, at a, at the, the, it's, the, it's a reduction in damage. So you're not going to be as effective with your attacks as if you were a pure build in terms of direct power, but the versatility that you have to be able to be flexible about the things that you're doing makes up for that. Um, let's take a look at this again, because we watched this uh, a couple weeks ago when it came out. I knew you would come, a risen one. I make no mistake. The dragon will appear before you when the time is come. Alright, here we go. I mean... Quick commercial break, everyone, to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time. Really appreciate the support. All you got to do is join as a member. You get access to private videos. You can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see. And beyond that, don't forget we're multi-streaming over on Twitch now, so you can support over there as well. Thanks so much to everybody. Let's get back to the video at hand. <laughs> okay, this is this is the part I'm really looking at here. This right here, like I when I see the lock-ons here, they're happening nearly instantaneously compared to what I'm seeing in the first game where it's definitely not instantaneous. Watch out. That was cool. You truly are formidable, Arisen. Look at that instant. That's an instant target lock. Look at that right there. Instant. Two hands. <laughs> Make manifest your will. That's the last. That one seems to be a slow lock on, so maybe it's just ability based. Hold fast to your strength of will, Arisen One. Those who can be of aid to you will reveal themselves in time. Thy will, thy soul. These are all the means thou hast to carve thy path anew. Yet your wicked schemes will avail you not. 
watching one. All right. Well, I still don't know. Um, I'll tell you what, guys. I'm leaning towards some sort of an archer. I love the idea of the multi-class uh, vocation they've talked about. I don't have the name in front of me right now because it's something new for Dragon's Dogma 2. That sounds very fun to me, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to, you know, I don't know if that's available from the start of the game or if that's something that you're going to have to unlock through leveling up, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to go back to my ranger thief roots in this game and go with a ranged character as opposed to a sorcerer. Um, not entirely sure yet, but I think so. Love to hear your thoughts. What are you planning on playing in Dragon's Dogma 2? Let me know in the comments below. It's soon. It's, it's it's about a month away, a little bit over a month away, but we're we're getting prepped and ready for it. Hopefully you're going to be tuning in for the live streams. Don't forget, every single day here and on Twitch, usually around noon central, but it just depends on the day. There's also a Discord. I play a lot of different games. Check them all out. Don't forget the Patreon and get a copy of my latest book. If you like fantasy, Dragonlance, Forgotten Realms, links are down there. See you next time, everybody. Cheers.